the news broke over the last few days that Ayrton Hogg is now is now confirmed as a United manager for next season. They're discussing a new contract with him and all that sort of malarkey, which to me makes zero flipping sense. But I guess because he's in his last year, it probably does make some semblance of sense to let him have some level of job security, I'm assuming, going forward. Um, considering how badly we finished the season in eighth place, despite the you know FA Cup win, it does seem very odd. It does seem very odd that they would keep him in a job. But when you think about it a bit more, it kind of makes sense because this is the easier decision than it would be to fire him, try and find a new manager and hope that goes well. So for me personally, I feel like last season was an unmitigating failure, unmitigating failure. And the, the really disappointing thing about last season's failure was that it was a reminder for me, at least as a United fan, that there is no quick fix. There is no saving us. The only way we're going to get saved is if the sporting side of the club, the structure is fixed and the only way that I thought it was going to be fixed is if we get new owners. That didn't happen. The Glazers sold us down the river or they pulled a fast on us. They intimated and suggested that they wanted to sell the entirety of the club. Then they decided last minute not to sell the entirety of the club and only sell a small portion of it. And then only sell a portion of it that they would give the partial owners control and sake of the footballing side. So it's almost like they listened to the fan backlash against the Glazers. Fuck the Glazers. Hope they fucking, you know, burn in a volcano somewhere. They listened to the backlash from the fans, but they refused to leave because why would they? It's um, the main is a good cash cow, but they relinquished control of the sporting side and gave that to in your group to handle that. Because I said, hey, you guys think we're useless and sport inside. We've had 10 years of failure. Here, here we go. But what they did that was really clever. They sold a portion of the club to Ineos at an exorbitant rate. I forgot what the exact figure was. But essentially, what they did was really smart is that they suggested that they wanted to sell the whole club for a particular amount. Let's say six to seven billion. But then they ended up selling a smaller percentage of the club for like four billion, let's say two to four which then would mean if Ineos wanted full control of the club, they would eventually have to end up paying more than the six billion that they said that they would sell it for. So in a way, you know, by fucking us over, they also got the maximum amount of money, which just goes to show how the Glazers move. They take out dividends, they do the okie doke with the fans, they sell a portion of the club for an exorbitant fee, and then, you know, we end up in a situation. Cool, no worries. When Ayrton Hogg was prospected or proposed to be manager of United, I was a big fan of his and I wanted him at the club, like a lot of fans. But I didn't want him at the club because of the trophies. I'm not too sure if that's the case with other fans. I have never thought that United are going to suddenly wake up tomorrow and become league challengers and Champions League challengers. I never thought that was the case. I thought because of the 10 years of failure that we've had under the Glazers' ownership, post Alex Ferguson retiring, we have a long way to go. Other clubs have taken over. Other clubs are in the incend uh, Other clubs are, are, are on the ascendancy. So to suggest that one manager, one player, could come in and fix us, and overnight we could compete in with the likes of Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal, is quite preposterous and almost foolish. You also, you have to take baby steps, and I thought a good baby step would be to get a manager like Ayrton Hagen. He's clearly a good coach. You saw what he did at Ajax when he was there. Uh, the, the the specific thing that kind of pops in my mind is the game that Ajax had in the Champions League away to Real Madrid. I think that might have been like 2019 or something. Amazing, right? You're like, oh shit, just you know, how they're popping. Um, no, it might, it, it can't have been 2019, but probably before that, but whenever it was, they were popping Real Madrid around the park. They were playing at the Bernabeu, completely ripped them to pieces. And I think they ended up winning 4-0 or something. It was a way much in the Champions League. A brilliant performance. And for me, I was like, okay, cool. If you're not going to be competing for the Champions League, if we're not going to be competing for the Premier League, can we at least play some good football? Can we at least have some entertaining games? Can we at least score some great goals? Can we at least just have a fun season? And then kind of progress from there. And my kind of long-term thinking was, like, okay, cool. You get Ayrton Hagen. He implements a good style of play. He coaches the players. He gets rid of some of the old deadwood that we had as club that have been fucking clogging up space and just been stealing a living. And then maybe the manager after him is the one that takes us to the promised land but i never thought it would be him i never thought it'd be a quick fix but at least we play good football that didn't happen he comes to united we play terrible football especially last season um the games that we win sometimes we don't deserve to win them falling out with players we still got a bunch of players we shouldn't still have at the club like the maguires like the mctominay like the aaron wambasakas who are still here stealing a living right and then in the end we end up having one of our worst league finishes ever 
we break all sorts of negative records like goals you know shots conceded and you know fucking you know point difference and goal score difference all these horrible records that we we break but then we win the fa cup at the end of the season and to be fair to be fair to the guy the fa cup win was incredible it was unexpected we did beat Man City soundly. Doesn't matter what the excuse is. Oh, Man City were on the piss the day before because they won the Premier League four times in a row and they were celebrating. Everyone went back to fucking Jack Greenish's house and were doing balloons and shit. Doesn't matter what the excuse is. Man City are the best club in England, maybe one of the best clubs in Europe, maybe one of the best clubs in Premier League history, and we demolished them in an FA Cup final. That doesn't need to be excused or whatever it may be. But I don't think that one victory can brush over or excuse how poorly we played for the entirety of the season. Same way how one result in the season shouldn't get him fired, even though the, the loss against Crystal Palace, any other top manager at top club, losing 4-0 to Crystal Palace, you're getting fired. So it, it's kind of confusing. And then add to that, add to that, my own feelings aside, the club were clearly interviewing people. That's the thing that kind of boggles my mind. I've never seen this happen before, where they where a rumour gets put out or uh, information gets leaked before the FA Cup final that Ericsson Hug is going to get fired whether we win the cup or not. Then it comes out, oh no, that's not the case. We're going to assess it. But still, they don't deny. Cool. And throughout the entire time that Ineos has been here, they have never publicly endorsed Ericsson Hug either. Cool. Whatever. Then he wins the FA Cup and instead of, if you're clever, instead of just announcing him, because I think if they would have announced that Ericsson Hug is staying immediately after the FA Cup win, even fans like myself, you have to just suck it up and kind of move on. It is what it is. That good feeling, the vibes of beating your bitter rivals, you kind of have to just put your hands up and be like, okay, cool, fair play. But they didn't. They wait, 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 which makes you think they are assessing their options, interviewing people, and then they are publicly interviewing, not publicly, but it's been well known that they're interviewing people like Thomas Tuchel. It's well known that they're sounding out people like England manager Gareth Southgate. And then they turn around and say, nah, we're going to stay with this guy. And I almost think to myself, like, if you're Ericsson Hogg, you almost have to feel like they're taking you for a dickhead as well, a little bit. Because they never wanted you really. And they kind of, it seems like they're settling for you because they don't trust the other options or because the actual person they really want isn't available right now. And the suggestion is, if you read some of the accounts from In The Know People, and it's been a rumour that's been floated from early too, by the way, they really want Gareth Southgate. All of the fans, myself included, I don't want Gareth Southgate anywhere near this club. Look what he's done, doing with this great, almost world-class generation of England players. He's fucking wasting them, right? Not picking the right players, um terrible fucking formation one of the good things he's done with England to be fair to Gareth Southgate he has restored the good feeling the players do look happy going to play for England I don't really know how much that has to do with him or to do their personalities but regardless he has cultivated an atmosphere uh whatever feeling around the country around them when they go into extra duty where they really do enjoy playing and they're not as weighed down by the pressure of the tabloids and the fans great but as a coach come on Gareth Southgate isn't Man United level at all. He probably still has to prove himself at a club once he does leave the England role. But he, he shouldn't prove it at Man United. He should start like a, at like a Crystal Palace level club, at like a Brentford level club. That's where he should start to try and get his way up again and to kind of, you know, repair his reputation, especially after um, his stint at Middlesbrough. But they have been talking about Gareth Southgate for a long time. So you have the feeling that they really wanted Gareth Southgate He's not going to, I think he's made it very clear, he's not talking to any clubs until after the Euros. I don't know why he says that anyway, because he's acting as if like loads of clubs are clamoring for him. I don't think that's the case. But regardless, it's almost as if they're like, they're giving Ericsson Hug the job as a placeholder almost. And of course, if it goes amazingly well, fair enough, you keep him. But if it does go as badly as it went last season, you've got a guy who's ready to go in fucking January, if need be. So it's a confusing situation. It really doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like it's a backward step. I feel like it's the easy decision to make because, again, the hard decision to make is to go out and interview some candidates who aren't maybe the typical choice, who aren't maybe a guaranteed choice to win trophies, whatever it may be, and stick with that and then also be judged on your results, on your pick. Because now, you know, it's almost like they don't have their own man in. They have someone else's man, but they're also not going to be judged as harshly as they would be if they got their own guy in, like a Deserby, like a Poch, like a Tuchel, whatever it may be. So it is a bit of a cowardly way out. And if anything, 
it does fill me with a little bit of like worry about this Ineos operation. They're kind of moving glazerish. They're kind of moving glazerish. You know, they're not really. There's apart from the Omar Barada thing, they don't seem to be clinical. They don't seem to move with intent. They don't seem to move with clarity. Everything's kind of drawn out and you know group exercise. Everyone's in, it's just. I don't know. I'm getting a bit of glazer feelings from these Greek people. I don't want to say that, but that's what I'm feeling. The article courtesy of Sky Sports says as follows. Eric Ten Hag will stay on as United manager. United and Ten Hag are said to be aligned after the club's end of season review, a process which lasted longer than two weeks and saw other managers sounded out for the role. However, the conclusion from the review was that Ten Hag should remain in charge and negotiations have begun over a contract extension for the Dutchman. I think it's insane to finish eighth in the Premier League because you'd imagine the Premier League over 30 plus games, that is more of a representation of what you've done than a trophy. That's why big managers, that's why managers of big clubs get fired after winning the Champions League because they finished second in the league. It doesn't matter that you won the trophy. That's a one-off game. What did you do over 30 plus games? We finished eighth and this guy keeps his job. Chelsea finished above us and Poch got fired. It's like the math ain't mathing. It continues. Ten Hag's current contract ends at the end of next season with the club having the option of extending it by a further 12 months. United finished a disappointing eighth, their worst finish in the Premier League history, but beat rivals Man City to win the FA Cup, Ten Hag's second trophy in many years. And that, I think, is something I have to give the guy credit on. And I think it's something that he sussed early on. Because I guess my thinking about the club and where we're at isn't what the everyone else thinks and feels like because the fans as well online some of the ten hog fanatics are weird bro because i'm a fan of man united i'm a fan of manchester united i'm a fan of the badge i'm a fan of the club no individuals i don't care who you are bruno whatever i, I, I don't give a fuck i'm a fan of the badge first so whatever's best for the club is what i'm a fan of but there are fans within our fan base who kind of idolize look up to love Eric Ten Hag, the managers and the players more than the badges. It's, it's a bizarre thing. Anyway, that being said, a lot of those guys have this whole like trophies, trophies, trophies thing. They see how bad we are. They see how poorly we play. But I think a lot of them feel like if we win trophies, it's okay. I don't think that's true. And I think they're, they're full of shit. Because when Mourinho was doing it, playing his haram, jihad football, parking the bus, everyone wanted him fired. He was winning trophies. And we were playing horrible football, but people didn't want him. So because of Ayrton Hag, what, has an affable face, because he's bald like Pep, I don't know what it is. It's not even like he's charismatic because he isn't. He speaks like he speaks like he's speaking through a, vo a vocoder or something. He's a weirdo. He's not the most charming dude in the world. Fair enough. But I don't know where that affection and that love comes from. It's very, very bizarre. But to give Ayrton Hag credit, I think he noticed something that I didn't notice. The fans are full of shit. The fans like to say they want to be patient. They want the club to kind of build slowly. We have a long way to go. We're not as good as Man City. Like everyone says the right things. But I think deep down, some of our fans believe that we're still the same club that won all those Champions Leagues, all those Premier Leagues, all those domestic cups under, under South. They still think we're the same club. They think all it's going to take is signing Harry Kane, signing this player, and then suddenly we're going to be challenging. That's why I think they think. That's why they want to win trophies because they still think we're like the big dogs. When we're not, we're clearly still a far way away from there. We finished, I don't know, I, I, I can't think of the top of my head, but I'd imagine in the last 10 years, we haven't finished in the top four often. So the fact that this is now becoming one of those things where people are like kind of bragging about, I think Ayrton Haag was very clever in that he noticed that the club are full of shit and that everyone wants us to play good football, but really what they want is trophies. So what he did is that he won trophies. He took every cup competition serious. Even in the League Cup, he never really rotated a squad. He played a full-strength squad. Bayinda, the second-choice goalkeeper, didn't get a sniff of the first team. Um, when when um, when Onana had to go to the African Cup Nations, um, Ericsson Hart made all kind of, you know, um, efforts to get Onana to stay for as long as possible and then send him out to the African Nations when he had to. And then Bayinda played like one or two games. After that, he never saw a first team again. So Ericsson Hart took all those cup competitions seriously because he knew one of them would stick. We won one last season. We won one again this season. So he's kind of proving everybody right, wrong 
because they say we, they want us to build solely, but they want trophies. And then the trophy is what saved his job in the end. Because if we didn't win the FA Cup against Man City, I don't think they stick with him. I don't think so. I think the FA Cup completely changed everything. And I think that's very short-sighted and very reactionary to take one game against your better rivals in a cup final while, you know, especially off them coming off the back of winning for a record fourth fucking Premier League in a row, it seems very, very, very short-sighted to give Eric Tag that job in that regard, especially considering how badly we played for the entirety of the season. But again, I could be wrong. Tanaka had to contend with injury-ravaged squad throughout the season, but managed to salvage Europa League qualification with victory at Wembley. The review concluded that Ten Hag deserves a chance to show what he's more capable of within a new sporting structure implemented by Sergio Rekas Ineos taking charge of football operations. I can agree with this last, last section. I can agree with that. There is an argument to be had with Eric Ten Hag being given the grace and the opportunity to work under a proper football structure. I've spoken about football structure ad nauseum on here. It's probably one of my favorite fucking phrases. Football structure, style of play. I love to speak about those kind of things when it comes to United because we're devoid of both. But to be fair, top managers have said, and I think Jose Mourinho made a good point of it one time when he was a pundit on, I forgot what show he was on, but he was a pundit on some show and they asked him, oh, what's your opinion of like Pep and Ergen Klopp? And he said, it's perfect. Like, I'd love to work with a club that gives you the full trust so you can do your job. And he basically made the comparison that, you know, Liverpool at one point went three years without winning a trophy and FSG never sacked Klopp. Um, Pep, whenever he doesn't like a player, Man City will go out and sign a, a replacement instantly. So they got the full trust of their club and their board. The structure is in a place where they try and do everything to maximise the success of the football team and do everything to please the manager. So Oz Mourinho was saying in a roundabout way, if I get given that structure, if I can work with an structure like that, anyone could be successful. I can be successful. And I feel like with most of our managers, especially post Cyrus Ferguson, a lot of them could argue that part of the reason why they weren't successful was because the football structure was non-existent. So maybe if with Ineos in charge and with certain people coming in place, with scout, football director, blah, 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 maybe there is an argument to be had with if you just let Eric Ten Hag coach, maybe we'll see a different Eric Ten Hag and we'll see a different United team. But I would then say no, because we saw him coach because he was the coach last season and we played terribly. So I'm not too sure. Maybe we'll see a difference, but I'm not too sure. I don't think that's something that's kind of like whatever. But hey, what do I know? But the interesting thing to me, the interesting thing to me is how this whole played out, right? How this whole thing played out. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. How this whole thing played out is almost as interesting as him staying. And this is courtesy of the account called Mina Ibrahim. Big up Mina Football. And she has broken down what actually happened. And this is from the Athletic article, which was behind the paywall. But she was nice enough to kind of write it up and give us an idea on what actually happened and how Ineos got to the decision of like keeping it on Hulk. What this shows to me is a lot of indecision and a lot of backtracking, and almost a bit of panic thinking. It doesn't show a group that kind of knows what they're doing and is going to put their, you know, their mast in the sand and kind of go from there. It's almost as if they're like not too sure what to do. And for me, it's given me a lot of glazerish energy. But again, I could be wrong. So this is courtesy of Mina Ibrahim, Mina Football on Twitter. She says, very interesting art piece in the article, in The Athletic, sorry, about how the decision to keep Eric Ten Hag came about. Spring 2023, Ineos planned for the 2024 season, 24 and 25 season, with Eric Ten Hag involved. Cool, right? That was initially when they came in. After the 4-3 loss against Chelsea in April, Eric Ten Hag was left out of meetings, including the decisions to part away with Varane. So Ineos start to make decisions about the footballing side of the club, as in, hey, Rafael Varane's player profile He's too injury prone. He's too old. Let's move on from him. But Ericsson Hogg wasn't consulted. So they're already planning for the future without this guy as early as that 4 3 loss against Chelsea. May 14th, force of letting Ericsson Hogg go before the Arsenal game was discussed after the 4 0 defeat at Palace, which was a disgraceful performance. Disgraceful. Because Palace aren't even that good. Losing 4 0 to a club like Palace is, you know, is sackable in itself. So they were considering sacking him as, as of May, they were considering to sack this guy. 
The plan was to part ways with him at the end of the season. Before the FA Cup, a meeting with top executives included Sergeant Ratcliffe, um, Brailsford and Blanc and Wilcox took place. This was after the Carrington review of Wilcox and Brailsford where they met with every player individually. Discussions on plans to bring in or attempt to bring in a new manager, drawing up a shortlist that included Poch, Tuchel, McKenna, RDZ, but also discussed other names like Amorim, Marco Silva and Roberto Martinez. So the club, the, honestly, this, these people are clueless. They discussed hiring another manager with the players individually before the FA Cup game. So maybe the players put that performance in knowing that this guy was going to get fired. And then out of the blue, it changes. <laughs> Imagine what that first training session is going to be like back. It's going to be so awkward because they all thought he was leaving. They all kind of, you know died on their shield, so to speak, because they wanted to give him a good send-off and because they wanted to give United fans something to cheer out for once at the end of the season, as Bruno Fernandes said. And now he's still there. Woo! Especially the players who are like, oh, I'm only going to stay if, if, if Ayrton Howe goes. The likes of Sancho and stuff, they're going to be so pissed. Southgate was liked because of his positive environment. He has created, like, honestly, man. Why, why are we are cursed? We are cursed. These people wanted to hire Southgate not because of what he does in terms of coaching, not because of how he's developed players. They wanted to hire him because of the positive environment he has created at fucking England. What, because he gets them to sit in different seating orders in a cafe? Because they have to sit on the table and not use their phones. You want him to be our manager? Concerns about Michael van der Gaag and ETH remained loyal to his number two. That you have to give ETH credit for. They wanted to get Michel van, der Ga- Michel van der Gag gone, but ETH gagged them and said, nah, that's my boy. If he goes, I go, but I'm sticking with him. Props to Ericsson Hulk for that. After the FA Cup, emotions of Wembley was put aside by our SJR in Brailsford. And you could see it, bro. Honestly, I felt so bad for Ericsson Hulk. When they were given the trophy in the stands and the ownership were there, they were so cold to him. It was so awkward when they hugged him and congratulated him. It was so weird. But when Pep was there, it was all like hugs and blah, blah, blah. But when Ericsson Hull came there, their manager of their club, they were so weird with him. So, again, it must be a weird position for Ericsson Hull to be in because he knows he's not wanted by these guys, really. They've only stuck with him because the options available aren't necessarily that much better than him to justify sacking him and they're scared that if they make the decision to sack him because he's a quote-unquote fan favorite especially after the FA Cup win if it goes wrong they're gonna get hounded out and they don't want that so it's almost like a oh let's avoid getting harassed and getting bullied and getting shouted out on the internet which again is dumb because whatever <laughs> ah they met with Tuchel Poch and was already out of this race on the job in the first week of June. Discussed our ideas with RDZ, but didn't align with Ineos group. Flew to Ibiza to deliver the news to ETH, who was aware of the process, but was not worried. I've never seen this ever in football. Usually in football, I'm not sure this happens in regular workplaces, but usually in football, when a manager gets fired, they usually have other managers in place they want to hire, but they don't interview them out of respect for the person they've already got in the job. They might sound them out. They might put the feelers out to an agent and say, hey, is your client available? But they're not going to interview the person because it's kind of in poor taste. When it does happen and there's pictures and they get caught, it always is really embarrassing because it's not, you know, it's not the kind thing to do type of thing. But I've never known a process where a manager is currently at the club and he knows that the owners don't really want him. They're actively interviewing people for his job while he has his job. And he's okay just to like chill. Because the only example I've seen is with um, Tuchel at Bayern Munich. Allegedly, the story goes at Bayern Munich that when Tuchel, when you, when Munich made a decision to fire him towards the end of the season, before the end of the Champions League game, he was obviously shocked. And it was obviously a little bit of a surprise to decide to fire somebody before such a you know crucial game. Why don't just do it at the end of the season? But they decide to like they're not gonna you know he's not gonna stay next season. They lose obviously the Champions League final to Real Madrid. But then during the process of that time between like them announcing he's not going to stay next season and then after the you know the loss they were interviewing people but they couldn't find anyone that was the right fit or the person that they wanted wasn't available so then they went allegedly the story is they went back to Tushu and said hey would you mind actually staying with us next season and allegedly he said no because you already you know like he took it as a disrespect that they fired him before the end of the season 
and then they had to kind of settle for Vincent Company, who's still a manager has a lot to prove. So that shows you that, you know, most regular people would see it as a bit of an affront. You fired me, and now because you can't find an adequate replacement, you now want me to stay. Like, go fuck yourself. But Erickson Hogg didn't mind. Like, he's clearly, like, happy. Like, you know, the salary's good. Man United's good. Like, why not? He's happy just to, like, stay and let them interview people. And he just sit there and, and hope that, you know, he's, 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 he's basically in that beef with his wife, having dinner and enjoying couples retreat. You know, and hoping that the people that they interview fuck up their interviews. <laughs> it was just a weird thing, isn't it? Like you're just sitting there hoping, like Tuchel fucks up and stutters. You know, um, R R R Roberto De Zerbi forgets his USB stick and can't present his PowerPoint presentation. You're just hoping they fuck up so that you keep your job. It's a very, very strange thing to be in. But like I said, um, I'm shocked by it. Still, I still think it's the wrong decision. Personally, I think fundamentally, I think it's very wrong to reward people for subject performances, especially in the league. The fact that we won the champion, sorry, the fact that we won the FA Cup Champions League, but then we finished eighth, I don't think removes how bad that eighth finish was. It doesn't eradicate or take away from that finish. So the fact that he keeps his job because of a trophy, a one-off game, is kind of despicable. And again, it's almost rewarding mediocrity because it means you can just, what, like fuck up the league, fluff the league, put the fans in pain, have us screaming and shouting at each other on Twitter spaces, be angry and play horribly. But then towards the end of the season, when it becomes pragmatic time, he can be he can be Mr. Pragmatic and get us defending as a team and attacking as a team. So it shows he could do it, but he chose not to do it at the beginning of the season. I don't know, man. I'm a little bit pissed by it. But again, what can I do? I'm just a single person out here screaming into the void. I'm just a single person out here screaming, screaming into the void. Nothing truly I can do. I wish there was more I could do. The first thing I do is get rid of the glazers, but that ain't happening anytime soon, is it? So what can we do? What can we do?